Today, we're talking about knives. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things, and today I have filled this box with pretty much every knife that I own, or at least every knife that I could find that I own. I've got a lot of stuff in this box to show you guys, ranging from cheaper knives that you can find pretty much everywhere, to more high-end knives that you can find places online, and I'll be sure to leave a link for anything that I can find online in the description down below. After seeing everything that's in here, most people would probably say I'm a collector, but I don't really view myself that way. I do definitely like knives. I carry them pretty much every day, so when something catches my eye, I normally go out and buy it, test it out, and see how it is. With that being said, I've got a ton of stuff to go through, and I'm going to try to keep this quick, so let's start off with the cheaper knives. Most of these cheap knives have either been gifted or acquired somehow over the years. I don't use them at all, but I still have them, so I grabbed them. First up, rack hunting knives that I was given. You got fixed blades with the gut hook, two of those. Two lockback blades, also pretty cheap. And then a tiny little lockback that's similar to the Spyderco man bug, except this thing is really cheap. Next up, more hunting knives. I'm pretty sure these are Sheffield knives that were given to me. You've got a big stainless lockback and then a little one to match it. Next up, some more cheap Sheffield knives. I'm pretty sure you can get these at Walmart. This thing is packed full of stuff. Bottle opener, corkscrew, mini blade, some kind of keychain mini multi-tool, an actual folding multi-tool. It's got a bunch of the same stuff in it. Another more traditional Swiss Army style type pocket knife, still with the same kind of stuff in it. And then a little all metal frame lock. Next up, a Subaru multi-tool. Most of you guys know I drive a Subaru. I'm pretty sure I was given this when I was skiing this year. It's got a mini blade, bottle opener, and a flashlight. Next, another Swiss Army knife with a bunch of the same tools. I'm pretty sure I found this on the playground when I was a really little kid. Another Swiss Army knife with a fork and spoon on it. I've actually already covered this in another video I did on knives, so if you haven't watched that already, be sure to check that out right here. And then I've got two Victor Knox Swiss Army knives. This is just the classic, and then this is the one with the light, which doesn't work. And it also has a pen, so you get the slice light right all in one little package. So I look at this whole category as sort of throwaway knives. Most of them are cheaply made with inexpensive steel. They may hold an edge for a while, but it's sort of a beater knife, one that you can just open a million boxes with, and then if it gets dull, it's not that bad to replace it. I don't find any of those that interesting, so let's move on to some better knives. Here is what I would consider to be better knives. These are most of the tools that I've used and carried over the past couple of years. You still have stuff on the cheaper end down here, but then once you move over here, it gets a little bit more expensive. By the way, I showed this organizer in a video before. This is the Gridit Organizer by Cocoon, and I'll be sure to leave a link for that down in the description below. I'll try to go through these from least expensive to most expensive, at least if I can kind of remember what I paid for them. First up, the Gerber Paraframe 2. This thing, believe it or not, is actually one of my favorite knives. I carried this thing for almost two years. It's really inexpensive, probably only like 10 bucks at Walmart. Beat the hell out of the steel, sharpened it a million times, and it's still a pretty good knife. It's a super thin frame lock, and it's one of those knives that you can beat up and not have to worry about it. Next up, the Kershaw Shuffle 2. I bought this knife and carried it for a little while, mainly because of how it feels in the hand. It's a tiny knife, but you can get a full grip on it. Very ergonomic, very well priced. I believe you can pick this up for about $15 to $20. It's got a cool stone wash finish on the Tonto blade, some pretty unique texturing on the handle, and then on the bottom here it has a bottle opener and a little screwdriver or pry bar. Again, a really thin frame lock, a nice pocket clip, and overall a pretty good budget knife. Next up, the Spyderco Tenacious, or as I like to refer to it, my kitchen knife. This is definitely one of the best budget knives that you can get from Spyderco. I believe it runs about $30 right now. Typical full flat grind, G10 handles, really good jimping. It's a pretty thin frame lock. You definitely won't notice it too much in your pocket. The blade's HCR13 MOV, so you might run into some rusting issues, but as long as you take care of it, it shouldn't be that bad. I call this my kitchen knife because I literally use it for food prep. It stays in the kitchen. I cut up chicken and sausage and steak and anything with this knife. It gets wet pretty regularly, so the action isn't the best on it, but if you give it enough flick, it still deploys pretty well. Next up, the knife that I wanted to love, but I just can't do it, the Mantis Pit Boss. When I first saw this knife, I was like, man, that thing looks so cool. It's got a Warncliffe blade. It's super thick. It's almost like an industrial box cutter. Frame lock design, G10 scales. It's got to be okay, right? Wrong. The lockup on this thing is terrible, as you can probably hear. There's little machining defects on the back of the blade here. The grind from the factory is subpar at best. I just really wanted to like this little knife, but I couldn't do it. I emailed the company and let them know I had a problem with it, and the dude who responded to my email was a complete head. I told him all the problems with it, and he basically said, if you don't like it, send it back. Needless to say, that is the first and last knife I will ever buy from Mantis. Next up, my one and only switchblade, the Lightning OTF. 
This is a super affordable switchblade. It's about 30 bucks, I believe, if you can even still find it anymore. The action on it is just so fun to play with, which is basically all I've ever done with this knife. As you can see, it doesn't misfire much. Metal body, metal pocket clip. I believe it's just a stainless blade, but man, is it fun to play with. Legality of these definitely vary from state to state, so you want to check your local laws before you go out and buy one of these things. Next up, a knife that I also use in the kitchen, the Boker S2. This knife was a collaboration between Sniper Bladeworks and Boker Plus. It's got this massive 440C steel blade, G10 handles, frame lock, a pretty decent pocket clip, and as you saw, the flipper. It should be pretty obvious why I use this in the kitchen. This thing's like a damn cleaver. One little modification that I also did to this was I cut out the G10 handle right here by the lock. The G10 used to come straight across here, so it was a little hard to manipulate the frame lock. As you can see, the liner already has a notch cut out of it, so I just took a Dremel, dremeled out the G10 to match the liner. Now it's really easy to get your finger in there and disengage the lock. It's a pretty cool collaboration knife, and if you like big blades, I definitely recommend it. Next up, another massive flipper blade. This is a CRKT, what the hell is it again? The CRKT M16 14 ZLEK. LEK meaning law enforcement knife, so I guess this thing is directed towards police officers. This thing features a massive Tonto blade with serrations, a seatbelt cutter, and even a window breaker on the back. It's got this tiny little frame lock which seems kind of flimsy, however on this side it's actually got a secondary lock. CRKT puts these on a couple of their blades and what it does is basically turn it into a fixed blade. This little spring loaded latch here will always remain forward so to close the knife you have to pull it back and then push the frame lock over. If you try to move the frame lock without moving that safety first, it's not going anywhere. I picked this knife up for $65, I believe it's Aussate steel, and you probably noticed that I haven't been mentioning blade steel on all these because it doesn't really matter to me. For most of these lower end knives, they're made with some kind of stainless steel. They'll hold an edge and you can sharpen them pretty easily as well. Now before we get into the more expensive knives that I own, I also had this Leatherman rebar laying around. This is a pretty common, straightforward Leatherman, all the usual tools. It's got blades, files, saws, bottle openers, screwdrivers, pliers, wire cutters, pretty much everything that all Leathermans come with. I got a Leatherman just like this for my high school graduation, which was years ago. And then recently, within the past couple of months, I was using it and the screwdriver actually broke on it. I contacted Leatherman, let them know what was going on. They said, sure, send it back. I sent it back to them a couple days later, they sent me a brand new Leatherman. So customer service there, awesome, definitely recommend them. Now to some of the more expensive knives that I own, starting with the Benchmade 42. But don't get too excited, this is just a Chinese knockoff. This is a pretty damn good replica of the Benchmade 42. Because it's a clone, that means it's cheaper, the latch flew off a little while ago, so I'm rocking a little paracord knot on there to keep it closed. The weight on this thing is distributed very well, which makes it one of people's favorite flippers. I'm not that good with the Balasong, but it's damn fun to play with. There's not much else to say about this knife. I know a lot of people are gonna ask where they can pick one up for themselves. Unfortunately, the site that I got this from does not sell it anymore, so good luck finding it out there. Next up, another Benchmade, a real Benchmade this time, and that's the full-size Griptilian. This is a super popular knife, probably one of Benchmade's top selling knives. 154 cm blade, nice texture and jimping on here putting the grip in Griptilian. And then probably the main selling point of this knife as well as other Benchmade knives, the Axis Lock. If you played with one before then you know what I'm talking about, the Axis Lock is awesome. Super fast deployment, super solid lockup. You can flick this thing open and close all day, never get tired of it. These things are definitely available pretty much everywhere, so if you're looking to spend about $100 and up on a knife, this is definitely a good option to go with. Next up, one of my all-time favorite knives, the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Not only is this my favorite knife, but if you talk to pretty much anyone in the knife community, everybody loves this thing. Huge spidey hole for fast deployment, full flat grind with a nice pointy tip. It's also S30V steel so you can put a good edge on it and it'll hold it for a while. Really good jimping, a nice forward finger toil so you can do some fine work with it. G10 handles, a pretty standard Spyderco pocket clip. And then again, one of my favorite locks, the compression lock. The compression lock is similar to a frame lock, however it's on the back of the knife so your finger is not in front of the blade when you're using it. And I'm also pretty certain that this is way stronger than a typical frame lock. Much like the axis lock, this is one that you can open and close a million times and you just never get sick of it. Next up, similar to the Paramilitary 2, is the Spyderco Yojimbo 2. This thing's got the same G10 compression lock pocket clip, but when it comes to the blade, this thing is way more wicked than the Paramilitary 2. It's obviously a Warncliffe blade, it's not a full flat grind, which I do prefer, but this thing just looks so cool. Now moving on to the blade that's been in my pocket for the past couple of months, and that's the Zero Tolerance 0804 CF. I talked about this knife in my last EDC update, so if you haven't watched that, you can check it out at the link right here. 
But a brief overview, it's a pretty big blade, titanium frame lock, DLC coating on both the blade and the frame. On this side, you got a really nice piece of carbon fiber, a pretty cool backspacer. And then of course, the flipper. The action on this thing is definitely its selling point. It is super, super smooth. I told this story before, but when I went and bought this knife, I wasn't even in the market for a new knife. I just picked it up and flicked it open like that, and I knew I needed to buy it. This thing is definitely expensive, running you over $200. I'm gonna say about $250, depending on where you can pick it up at. But if you have the money or have some gift cards like I did, it's definitely a good knife to pick up. That brings us to our last blade and pretty much the only fixed blade that I own and that is the SE6. You may have seen this in videos before of me chopping wood and doing all sorts of stuff with this. This thing is a complete beast. Super ergonomic micarta handle, definitely my favorite handle materials out of everything that I just showed you. Full tang blade and USA made, this thing comes with SE's lifetime warranty and everything that I've heard about that warranty is great. You're out using this knife, beating on the thing and for some reason the tip breaks, I'm pretty sure SE is going to replace this without any questions. It comes with a decent sheath, good retention on it. It's got a belt clip on this side and some paracord so you could strap it to some molly webbing if you wanted to. This is my only wilderness survival style knife that I have, but I'm pretty sure I don't need anything other than this. So that's pretty much it for all the knives that I own. Everything you see in front of you serves its own purpose, and I'm pretty happy with the little collection that I have going on. Another thing you're gonna ask me is how do I sharpen all these knives? I've got two options. One, this little Smith sharpener. It's got these ceramic rods that store in the bottom of it that you put in on an angle here, similar to the Spyderco Sharp Maker. It's got a little diamond stone underneath here, and this also doubles as a hand guard. Definitely not the best option out there, but if you're patient, you can put a pretty decent edge on a blade. And then if I really wanna take my time and put a better edge on a blade, I'll use this Lansky kit. This is one of those kits that come with five different stones, which are different levels of abrasiveness. It comes with a couple rods to put the stones on, and then this little jig to put the knife in. These go into the jig and then it keeps your sharpening at a specific angle. Also a little bottle of honing oil to clean the stones, some instructions and sharpening tips, and overall this is a pretty good kit if you're going to be patient and you want to put a really nice edge on your blade. So that is it. Now you guys have seen pretty much every single knife that I own. Like I said, I will try to leave links to anything that you see here on the table down in the description below so you can go out and pick one up for yourself. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in a comment down below and I'll try to answer anything that I can. Now I'm not going to make any promises, but if you guys want to see a video like this but with my guns, leave a like on this video. Let's say if we get to 2500 likes, maybe I'll do a gun collection video. So that is all for today. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.